Joining us here instead is the Conservative MP Chris Philp and the property developer and television presenter Sarah Beanie. Welcome to both of you. Chris Philp, George Osborne, the former Chancellor, famously said, we are the party of builders. But actually, when you look at the figures, you haven't been, have you? Well, I don't accept that. We've made enormous progress. When uh, Labour were in office, they only completed, I think, 125,000 When was Labour last in office? Yeah, 2009-10. 125,000 units. As you just said, we're now up to 217,000 completions this year. So it's right. been a big move forward, almost doubled. However, as Sajid Javid said in the piece you just played, um, it's not enough. We need to do more. We need to be building something like 250 or maybe mm. even 300,000 housing units a year to catch up um, with the deficit of housing that Labour left behind. So a lot of progress, but there is more to do. Right, except you've been in power in one way or another for the last seven years, and you've still not reached that 250,000 target mm. that your own white paper says is required. You're still short of it this year. You've been way off it for the yeah. last seven. We are, we are slightly short. You're quite right. Uh, it's been steadily increasing over the last eight years. From a very low but bar. We need, but we need to do more. That's why the government have committed £9 billion to building social housing, which is a staggeringly large sum of money. Another £2 billion was announced in the conference speech. How many extra homes was that going to build? The, the £2 billion that Theresa May announced, a great fanfare before the mm. speech, and then it worked out as how many homes a year? Well, you've got to look at the package. It's, the package as a whole is £9 billion. And of course, yeah. that isn't the only thing we're doing. The housing white paper last year um, helped, is designed to help free up the planning system. And I think next week in the budget, we're going to hear more. Right. What would you like to hear, Sarah, in the budget? Mm -hmm. On housing, that is. On housing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> not <laughs> everything. <laughs> I, I think I'd like to see uh, uh, really more thought, a lot more thought put into, into how, instead of building houses where there's uh, 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 too, you know, uh, too much demand at the moment. Why don't we try and really consider spreading people out across the country and and building houses? Because I think what the, the problem that I have is that there's a massive concentration of people living in in the southeast, which we all know. Building more houses in the southeast is not going to bring house prices down. It's simply not. So. Um, so what we have is, is it's an affordability problem. It's not a housing shortage, it's affordable housing. But there is a housing shortage too, surely. Well, it's there. Is there really? Well, I mean, in terms of the demand in London and the South East, if you're thinking about people wanting to move for jobs, isn't there a shortage as well as an affordability problem? Well, there is an argument that if there was a shortage of housing, you wouldn't be able to find a house for sale. And if you look online, you'll find lots of houses for sale. So, so I think what we're really we're not really saying there's a shortage of houses to buy. There's a shortage mm. of houses that people can afford to mm. buy. And and so what we're really talking about is the house price issue, not a shortage of the actual houses. Right. Do you agree with that in terms of <coughs> building homes away from the concentrations like London and the South East where they have traditionally been built in large numbers? Well, I think we do need to spread housing around. We need to make sure that our great northern cities are being invested in, you know, things like um, the HS2 going up there will help and the Northern Powerhouse project. Um, but I think there is a supply issue as well as just an affordability issue. There certainly is an affordability issue. There's no question about that. And we need to be creative about where we build. So we need to make sure every inch of brown, spare brownfield land in London is built on. For example, Transport for London have 6,000 acres of brownfield land. But it's expensive, isn't it, and difficult sometimes to actually access that brownfield. Well, it can, well, it can be. And there is a Housing infrastructure fund, two billion pounds designed to unlock it. But it may be expensive, it may be difficult, but we need to grip the problem and get on with it and build on that land because the houses are so badly needed. I would really like to see any public land that is ever sold, i.e., our land, we all own public land. When it's sold, I'd like to see it it's only being sold at a price. The problem is, is the prices that it ends up being worth means that people have to build houses that are not affordable. There's a certain amount of affordable houses, but they're only affordable for a nanosecond. So why can't we cap affordable house prices and, and ha make house prices stay affordable permanently? When we sell public land, it can, will only ever be built on by, uh, with houses that are affordable and that stay affordable. Chris Phil? Well, that's an idea I've, I've heard floated, and I think we should definitely look at doing that. Mm -hmm. I am excited about the possibility of bringing forward more public sector land. I mentioned TfL, mm -hmm. where I have lots of land sure. administrative defence. That's the there land is issue. What about do? the affordability? Because when people talk about affordable housing and you look at some of the prices <coughs> of these new homes, they're not affordable, mm. really. Well, not really affordable to anyone, certainly yeah. not a first-time buyer, necessarily, unless you've got a, a great big deposit or the, the bank yeah. of mum and dad. Well, obviously, the Help Buy scheme is designed to give people uh, a boost to their mortgage. They only require a 5% deposit, and that is helping hundreds of thousands of people. But you are, generally speaking, right. At the pricing with houses, like anything, is a function of supply and demand. There is massive amounts of demand. There's not enough supply, and that's why prices are so high. So really, the root cause of this is increasing the supply, and that's what the housing white paper and the budget next week will do.
I, I think Sarah has a point, though, because <clears throat> Britain has two infrastructure problems. In London and the South East, it's housing, or housing affordability, as you say. In much of the Midlands and the North, it's actually transport mm, infrastructure. Yes. It's, and it's not even so much about the big project, you know, Northern mm. Powerhouse and HS3. It's about the little links, mm. the mm -hmm. connection between Burnley yeah. and Manchester. Yeah. And I was talking to Yvette Cooper the other day, who said there is only one train from her constituency into Leeds every day. One train. Yeah. Now, yeah. If, if the great northern and midland towns revive even more than they have done, many of them have been revived already in the last few years, partly because many of them are university towns, actually. But if they continue to, to grow and flourish, and they will do, if we can sort out some of those little infrastructure links, then the pressure of people coming down from the Midlands yep. to the North to London and the South East will be relieved, partly. Right, and on that issue, without transport links, can you really build those homes elsewhere in the country if they are isolated pockets that, that, that aren't well served by proper transport links? Well, there are a lot of affordable homes already that nobody can get to. So mm. we, we don't necessarily <laughs> need to build more homes. We just need to, to get the people to the homes, and that needs the infrastructure, it needs the jobs there, it needs the schools and the hospitals, and, and that will stop the concentration. If you, take, if you invest in, in business outside London where the houses are, then the people will follow the jobs. Right. In terms of the sort of land that you could build on, builders obviously like the green belt. Should it be built on more? Well, I think the green belt is very precious. It really improves the quality of life for people who live on the edge of large cities, which includes, I should declare an interest, my own constituency right. of Croydon South. And isn't that the problem? Tory councils or councils in constituencies like ones you've just described will block Well, this. I think you could I think you could look at the green belt covers quite a large area. You could look at whether there are bits of the green belt which are not what you and I would imagine to be green belts mm. sort of beautiful fields. So some bits have been misdesignated. So there should, you could certainly do an audit of that. But I think you can also build higher in the centre of towns. Croydon Town Centre, for example, is an ideal place to go up 20 or 30 storeys. So those are the kind of places, and it's very accessible because East Croydon Station has fantastic links. But I think the point Sarah made um, about transport links is important. And if we do invest more in transport links that bring people into those northern cities like Manchester and Leeds, and that will help a good deal as so well. So should the government borrow significant amounts of money to invest in housing and the requisite trans transport links? Well, it, it's doing that already. We've got a £35 billion pound, uh, capital spending programme in the government. We're doing things like Crossrail. That's the biggest engineering project in Europe. Uh, who will find out about Crossrail 2 in due course. We're building HS2, one of the biggest high-speed rail projects in the world. So I'm spending £9 billion pounds on affordable